The purpose of this video is to show how to change out the Sprague bearing and the Sprague drive ring. There is a new redesigned part and that is shown in this video. This is related to how the starter system works and the starter motor drives a set of reduction gears and then a one-way Sprague bearing with a large gear turns the engine over and the engine starts. All the components are shown there. All of this is on the left side of the engine. I'm going to show you now this process of changing out this Sprague ring, drive ring, and Sprague bearing. The gearbox uses 425 cc's of oil. There are two cavities that must be drained. The main gearbox has about 325 cc's in it and then there is about 100 cc's that's trapped in the magneto flywheel. First we drain the main gearbox. The magneto flywheel is an oil bath and I will show you in a minute here exactly why some oil is trapped in there that has to be drained. This is the oil drain for the magneto flywheel. It's this bottom bolt on the flywheel cover underneath the shifting pedal. You can see clearly that it's draining there. It has a copper washer on it. And you have to be certain you get that bolt back in that spot. First, before we tear down the side of the engine here, circ clip on the shifting pedal, just kind of a little safety thing. And then you loosen the pedal with an eight millimeter socket. You don't have to take the bolt out, the pedal just slides right off the shaft. I use an impact to take things apart. Using an impact to put things together is something that you have to be very careful about. So I'm removing the reduction gear cover plate here. It actually has a, a aluminized fiber gasket that unless you damage it is typically reusable I show it there. Keeping track of all our nuts and bolts, you should be able to extract the gear sets just like that. You can't put this back together wrong, and both of those chromium shafts are the same length, so you don't have to worry about anything there. It's pretty straightforward. There are smaller, finer teeth on the gear that is turned by the starter motor. And the purpose of all of those is to reduce the ratio from starter motor to engine. Hidden bolt there behind the lower gear set. And then the rest of them I take out of the cover. There are a total of five. Remember that bottom one is a copper washer. It's a seal for the oil drain. Then the coil is mounted to a bracket that's attached to the back of the magneto cover. And it it has two 6mm bolts that use an 8mm sized wrench. Take those bolts out and set that coil aside. You can use a coat hanger or something to hold it up there if you want. Jesse's going to give me a hand here. Then with some wiggling, the reason it takes some wiggling is there's a big o-ring on the starter motor that seals this housing to the motor. And you can see a little blue grease around the starter motor there. Release the wiring loom with the little clip. Be sure not to mess up your gasket. Impact to get the big Allen bolt out of the center there. That Allen bolt holds all these parts, including the flywheel, to the crank. You can see here a bearing and a chromium bushing. And this is the Sprague bearing itself. Put it back the way it came off. There's a Woodruff key on the flywheel. And the puller tool actually is the same one as Gas Gas Pro, but only the electric start TRS bikes use this tool. The non-electric start bikes use a different tool that's not related to Gas Gas. Make sure the tool is fully seated, and then make sure that the bolt in the center of the tool is also fully seated, as I'm doing there. And you just have to take the impact and going clockwise, give it just a little burp, and off comes the flywheel. I use the tool as my handle when I go ahead and pull the flywheel off. Its resistance is because of the magnets. 
Here I show the actual oil passage holes in the magneto area where gearbox oil gets in there. The top hole equalizes the level of the oil, shown here, circled in red, the bottom one is everything below that is what you're draining out of the cover approximately 100 cc's I like to mark the end of the crankshaft right where the Woodruff key is this way when I'm putting it back together it's very easy to peer in there when you're sliding the flywheel on and align the keyway in the flywheel with the Woodruff key on the, on the crank now we're going to take off the sprag driven ring shown here with the six bolts around it and uh, I show soft jaws and so it's securely clamped in a vise. The early ones were held with green Loctite and green Loctite has an extremely high melting temperature so you just have to use a torch. You almost certainly will not get these Allen bolts out without heat and I tried a propane handheld torch and it just was not making the heat we needed. Now TRS recommends blue Loctite. So when you're putting this back together, use blue, not green. Blue is a good Loctite with a much lower temperature and it's designed to make things removable but still hold them. The green Loctite is basically designed for a permanent connection I cut the audio from this because the torch is rather loud and then also it was very hot that day. We had a big fan running in the background. Jesse's helping me. I show here that we used a two-man program here. One guy heats up the bolt individually one at a time. Just a few seconds and that gets your green Loctite warmed up enough that it will release and Jesse gets right in there with an Allen. He's wearing welder's leather gloves so he doesn't burn himself accidentally. Then I go for the next one. I'm going to show you all six bolts, the removal process. This way you can get an idea of the actual time involved in this. This is really the best way to do it. Um, and yeah, that's a big torch. It's oxygen and acetylene. Two down four to go just a few seconds I'm doing a circular pattern right on the outside edges of that bolt that Allen bolt Jesse gets them right out just loosen them once they're loosened we'll be able to take them the rest of the way out he rotates the flywheel and device 180 degrees so I can get the top three And then we have a bucket of water down there under the vise, and then when this is all over, we'll go ahead and dip the flywheel in there and let it cool down. However, I will tell you with this method we did, we did not really get the flywheel itself very hot. It was warm, but we didn't get it really hot because I was focusing my heat right on each of the bolts one at a time. Got to be careful with a big torch like this, man. You got, if you're not paying attention, you can set something on fire. And most definitely, you can severely burn yourself. So he steps well away from me. I step well away from him. And I turn off the torch. He gets the last bolt loose. This is the original design sprag ring, and it has these notches. And you can see they are in alignment. And the new one, the notches are angled. You can see here they cut at an angle. The reason for this is so that you can very quickly identify first version and second version. The second version is a new alloy and has a heat treatment and a plating process where the sprag bearing grabs. You can see it's shiny. You can see the original one has a rather dull natural finish. When I put them together, you can clearly see the difference. The original design is on top. So the original one used countersunk Allen bolts like the one shown on the left. The new version uses an Allen cap screw. However, it's a very high grade 12.9, very strong, special screw. You can see here that it's a flat surface down in there in that hole for that cap screw to seat against. 
There are two alignment pins that make sure it's properly aligned on the flywheel magneto itself. And these are difficult to remove. You can't just grip them. They're uh, Actually, they're made out of needles for a bearing. And we found pretty much the only way to get those out of there is you clamp it in a good, strong, large vise, like I'm showing here, making sure it's flat and level. You really have to crank on the vise. You don't have to worry about squishing those because they are very hard. You can use a screwdriver, or you can use like a chisel kind of a thing like this one. I'll show you with the screwdriver first. You just kind of get under the edge there, and, and you can pry up on it very carefully, working your way back and forth, left to right, and then you can actually extract those pins on this demonstration here, I actually broke the one on the left. <laughs> That's the consequences of kind of getting in a hurry. When I get this off and I reach it off, you see clearly the left one's broken. So then I'll do it again here, and this time I'll use the chisel and use a small hammer and tap it on a different one. Tap, 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 and it'll start to rise. And again, you know, you have to go back and forth. You don't want to bind it up. And then when you're putting your new ring together, if it doesn't have the pins, we were actually able to take the new ring and just set it down onto the pins, still clamped in the vise there. We didn't, we didn't even move the pins. We took the old ring off, like you're seeing here, and then we set the new one right down onto the pins and tap, tap, tap. Right there, just like that. Reassemble the engine in reverse order of what I showed you here in the beginning. Let me put this all together. Be sure that this gear rotates freely clockwise. Counterclockwise, the sprag bearing should be engaged to turn the engine over. Blue Loctite on everything. On the six bolts on the ring and on the center big allen bolt. And yeah, I use a pistol grip impact to put these on. I'm not hammering it. It's just how I do it. You can't really use a torque wrench because then you have to try to hold the flywheel with some kind of a device. You can see that it spins freely clockwise and it locks and turns the engine over when I turn it counterclockwise. That's correct right there. You can actually install that spray bearing backwards if you're not careful. So that's where you have to check that. Be sure you put some of that grease that you'll see on the starter motor, smear that back around on there or the o-ring and stuff. It'll help you when you're tapping on the flywheel cover. Be sure you get the wires realigned and properly positioned behind there. Remember the fine tooth gears on the top and it's the one that actually is driven by the starter motor. It goes right in there like that. And remember the two chromium shafts are the same length so they interchange. And like I say, you can't put this together wrong. I mean, you can fiddle with it, and it could be frustrating, but you cannot put it together wrong. It won't let you. And you put the cover back on. Be sure your gasket is properly positioned. I put a bolt through it just to hold the gasket in place when I'm reassembling. You can see here, I put a bolt through it. It takes a little wiggling because the outer shaft supports are machined into this cover. So don't bind that cover up trying to tighten it. Make sure it's seated into those two shafts. Back and forth method of tightening. Put the shift pedal back on. Refill the gearbox 425 cc's of your preferred oil. You're all done. I recommend that before we put the oil in that you hit the starter button once just briefly just to make sure everything's working correctly in case you have to take it back apart and find something that you maybe improperly assembled. But this is pretty straightforward, this repair here, this change out of those parts. And that's it. You fixed it. Thank you for watching.